there's been, I think, a, a very strong realization about um, how um, individual country responses are interlinked with um, uh, the, uh, go the, the, the global uh, response. And so we've been engaging with um, many uh, of uh, the governments uh, across the world, um, including those who have excess doses, so um, getting to the point around dose sharing, for example, making sure that where there are excess doses, those doses may be reallocated um, so that we can have a higher global population coverage uh, more quickly. Um, I, I, I think those discussions uh, have been receiving some traction, but there is still a way to go, and very, we very much encourage governments, I think, to pursue their discussions with us on that. And what do you think international institutions like the IMF can do? So clearly the IMF is an incredibly important uh, stakeholder for COVAX. Um, and thank you for having me uh, today. Um, I think having a central institution like the IMF that can call upon countries to continue spending on healthcare is really critical um, because it will help plot a path to recovery. Um, we know that governments, particularly in lower income countries um, that have very limited resources, tend to um, under invest um, in, in health. And so I think being able to have uh, the voice of the IMF, uh, particularly in this time, um, but also I think beyond um, uh, the, the setting of, of uh, an acute pandemic, to make sure that there is scale up in healthcare spending. And, and, and protection. Um, I think the value of vaccination has never been more clearly demonstrated than uh, within th this uh, context. But you know that applies also to other vaccines, not just COVID-19 vaccines, in, in terms of um, uh, the economic uh, de development. And so making making sure that there is the underlying investment in healthcare systems, so that we protect national immunization programs, that we make sure that routine and primary health care uh, programs are, are um, being able to be back on track and then maintained, I think is really critical and the IMF has a strong voice in this. Uh, well, we at the IMF are committed to helping our member countries weather this health and economic crisis and we have been encouraging our member countries in the context of fund-supported programs really to uh, do the necessary spending on health care. And we're going to hear more on this at our spring meetings this week. My next question is really on um, preparedness for future pandemics. You will have seen that world leaders recently called for an international treaty to better prepare for future pandemics. And about 60% of respondents don't think we're any better prepared today than we were for COVID-19. So from your perspective, Aurelio, what do you think we need to do to be better prepared? Are we drawing the right lessons? So fascinating uh, results. Um, first of all, perhaps to ground ourselves in the fact that um, the pandemic threat is increasing. Um, the ability for outbreaks to quickly escalate into epidemics and into pandemics it, it is rising. We know this because we are seeing the patterns in terms of human encroachment on the natural environment, the modern agricultural practices that are used, climate change. Those all increase the potential for um, a, a deadly pathogen to spill over into human uh, population. And, um, you know, that's combined with increased migration, population growth, urbanization, uh, again, increases the, the, the risk of uh, uh, outbreaks taking on uh, very, very uh, large proportions. So in terms of um, preparedness, I think one is really to look around the level of investment that's going to be needed on an ongoing basis. Um, if uh, I think we had had more of the systems and infrastructure in place before the pandemic, we would have been able to respond to it um, faster and, and, and more effectively. So I think making sure that we keep in mind this experience to help teach us what a, a, a basic level of preparedness that needs to be ready at all times is, I think is an important piece. 
piece. The other piece is also around strengthening global surveillance uh, of infectious diseases um, and, and related to that also in terms of how we invest uh, in vaccines and really do see them um, as, uh, as an investment. Um, in COVAX, we are a coalition of, of three partners, so Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance uh, that I represent, the World Health Organization, uh, the Coalition of Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, CEPI. And CEPI was very much created in response to the uh, West Africa Ebola outbreak. And so I think that was a, a helpful step. But I think we need to make sure that we have um, these more durable and, and, and sustainable um, uh, features in, in place. Because ultimately, the market failure that I referred to in the beginning will still exist in terms of not having the commercial incentives for the private sector to invest in infectious diseases that may or may not happen, that may or may not have a small or large scale, and really thinking about how the financial systems are, are, are set up so that we are able to, to, to tackle this and have um, a, a, a basis that we can draw on uh, more readily at any moment in time for any pathogen that may arise. Right. Clearly, preparedness is something that policymakers are going to be paying a great deal of attention to in um, the coming months and years. So this pandemic has taken a huge human toll. Each one of us has been affected to a greater or lesser extent. Simply put, we need more vaccines to end the pandemic. For that, we need more funding, more cooperation, and more solidarity. And COVAX is essential to make that happen. So Aurelia, this brings us to the end of our program. Thank you for joining us. We wish you the best. And I would like to thank everyone for joining us for this conversation today. From the IMF in Washington, I'm Sabina Bhatia, and I wish you a very good day.